Let's talk about bathroom design. Design, details, and favorite things. I'm gonna take you on a tour of not one, not two, not three, but four bathrooms here at House Heidi. So first of all, you're thinking about redesigning your bathroom. What do you need to think about? Let's think about how you wanna use it. What are the features you want it to have? And overall, what is the color palette? When you're out there sourcing in the market, it may feel that the choices are overwhelming. So what I'm gonna suggest you do is start with something you love. Do you want a light and bright and airy bathroom? Do you want something that's completely neutral, a little bit colorful, or entirely white on white. This is where you need to start. You need to have some sense of a direction. If I'm setting out to design a space like a bedroom or a living room or a dining room, chances are I'm gonna start with a pattern fabric because I find that the color and the palette and the pattern really helps me zone in and define what the character of the room is gonna feel like. So how do you do that in a bathroom? I start with the tile. I go on a wild, wondrous adventure of sourcing tile and find the things that speak to me. Find some sort of tile that helps you think about how you want that bathroom to feel when you're done. What am I talking about? Okay, let's take a look at the four bathrooms here at House Heidi because I think they are all defined by the tile. First, let's start with the Glacier Suite. We are here, we are in the mountains, and overall, this house has a very naturally inspired palette. So the first choice I made for the bathroom here was to go with a chevron patterned mosaic tile. Now, this is a marble mosaic that is sold in basically 12 inch sheets, and all of the mosaic is laid up together on that sheet, ready to be installed. The neat thing about this is it combines three different types of marble all together. We've got pure white, we've got a sort of creamy tone, and then we have this rich palette of grays. And the tip cut chevron, I think has a little bit of a mountain riff. This tile is ideally suited to being used on the floor. The great thing about it is if you're using a shiny marble, a polished marble, you wanna be careful that you don't use large format tiles because they can be slippery. I don't need any liability here, so I'm keen to use something that has lots of grout and that's what you get from a mosaic. The great thing about these mosaic sheets is they're flexible. You can decide how you want to use them. Do you want to use them on the wall or on the floor? We've got tip cut mosaic chevron here on the floor in the Glacier Suite. Now let's hop over to the Heidi bathroom and in the Heidi Lou we went with something that is colorful. Ooh, blue. Natural stone that is blue. This is a type of quartzite. It's called Azul Maca Ubus, and it has the most beautiful shade of blue. Look at this mosaic. This is fancy. This is a combination of the Azul Maca Ubus combined with Thassos White. And Thassos White comes from Greece, and it is pure white and a little bit sparkly. Think about a snowy day. I always call it diamond snow. When you go outside and the snow looks crystalline and it's sparkling from the sun, that is what Thassos looks like. Look at this pattern. It's fabulous. It feels like a spiky snowball. This is a fun, fun tile here. And it also allows you to have that jumping off point that you want for color. You want something more neutral? Okay, let's pop into the Nimbus bathroom here. This is all gray on gray. This is an all time favorite stone of mine. It is durable, it's practical, it's so easy to use in so many different solutions. I've gone with a six by 24 size tile here. The honed finish is incredible. It almost mimics a wooden plank. And so you can install it so it looks like it has that kind of plank effect. I've installed it here in a brick pattern and this tile runs seamlessly from the floor right into the shower. If you have the chance of installing a curbless shower, I suggest you do it. It is fabulous. You use a linear drain, which goes against the back wall, and then the tile just does a teeny tiny slope and bend right at the threshold leading into the shower. You don't have to step over and into it. It is crisp, it's contemporary, it's beautiful. The other thing you can do is go all light, all bright. Home tile here, 
another all-time favorite stone of mine. This is called Oriental White, and I've used the same material in two different formats in this bathroom. I've got it in a four inch size on the floor, and I've done a very simple stacked pattern. If you're looking for contemporary style, you're thinking minimalist, you might wanna try a stacked pattern. And then into the shower, I've gone with a penny round because this gives more grip. I've found in the past that sometimes that Oriental White can feel a little bit slippy if it's in a larger format. And like I said, we don't want slippy. What do I love about penny round tile? Well, it's so charming. Who doesn't love polka dots? I love polka dots. Admittedly, completely love polka dots. Let's talk about wall tile and what you can do to elevate it and make it seem a little bit interesting. So I said I love penny rounds. I love them on the floor in a small one inch size, but check it out here in the Nimbus bathroom. This is an oversized penny round. This almost has an ombre finish to it. It's a two-tone glaze, so it almost has an outline. This looks like snowballs. And if we are in a mountain town that is a lot about snow, having that little riff don't take yourself too seriously when it comes to bathroom design. Do try to have some fun. Do try to make sure that your bathrooms have personality. And if you are designing multiple bathrooms all at once, don't do them all the same. That is just such a waste. You have to pay to have all of the tile installed and all of the fittings and fixtures. So why not explore? Why not experiment and have fun? So if you're talking about having fun, how about combining multiple materials together? Here's an idea. You can add a stripe detail. In the Heidi bathroom, I did an overall field of what looks like hand-formed tiles. They're actually not hand-formed, but they're designed to have a slightly uneven hand-formed looking edge. And these are just in a semi, sort of a satin glaze, I would say. Not super shiny, not completely matte, in a white finish. And then, I happen to find accent tile that ties just seamlessly to the color of that fabulous blue mosaic. So I decided, how about a stripe? How about a few stripes? How about the idea of a racing stripe? So a vertical stripe, a single stripe off to the left side and a double stripe on the other. This is my idea of playful. If you've got a feature in a room that you want to play up, if you want to accentuate it, think about how you can call attention to it. When we renovated, this house originally had eight foot ceilings or less throughout this entire top floor. We ended up being able to harness these incredible vaulted ceilings. We've got huge ceiling height. And instead of putting in a new drop ceiling, we just decided to go with it. So most of the bathrooms have these fabulous angled ceilings. And this accent stripe, this little racer stripe, zips all the way up and it looks fun and fabulous. So you can do a vertical stripe, or how about this bathroom? In the Woodland Suite, I did two-tone tile. Deep, rich, super glossy emerald green accentuated with bands of white. Here's my suggestion to you. If you're thinking about doing a pattern, always, always, always lay it out, experiment. Think it through, make sure you can visualize it before you sign off with your tiler walk out the door and come back and it's all set. What I did was I got a box each of the white and the green tile and I laid them out on a big table to decide exactly how I wanted it to go. And it's a fun inverted pattern where we have more green at the bottom and more white at the top. You don't have to do a pattern. You don't have to do stripes. You don't have to do bands. This is what's fun about tile is you're dealing with individual pieces. So you get to create whatever you want. I just think these glossy tiles are a fabulous way to do it. But maybe you want something completely quiet. Okay, let's hop back into the Glacier Suite and see how it's done here. This is just white glazed tile and it's simply installed stacked. However, one little finishing detail here. This is a Listello. I've used this Listello so many times in so many different ways. And I really like to use it to create a subtle striped detail within a shower stall. This is a honed marble. It's honed oriental white marble. And you can install a number of rows of your plain, affordable glazed white tile and then punctuate it with that little line of marble listello. In all aspects of design, it's always about the details, but these are the fun details that really help bring your project to life. So that's the tile. 
Now let's think about amenities. How about a soaker tub? Not everybody loves a bathtub, but if you are a bathtub fan, I have three fun ideas to share with you. Number one, how about a faceted tub? Have you ever seen a tub that looks geometric like this? Isn't this great? I found this one on Wayfair. How about if you're tight on space and you want the look of a soaker tub, but you don't have room to allow it to float off the wall, check out this tub. This is a flat to the wall soaker tub. I found this one online at Lowe's. Or what if you want a freestanding soaker tub, you want it deep, you want it sleek, streamlined and elegant, well, you might like this tub. This tub is by DXV from American Standard. It's elegant, it's streamlined, it's not too wide, but it's nice and deep. So three different tubs, three different looks, three different price point options, you get to choose the one that suits you best. Now we need to talk about vanities. So when it comes to vanities, do you need storage? Do you need two sinks? Do you want just a floating counter? In the case of this house, it's a rental. So I didn't think that all of the bathrooms need a ton of storage. I decided to experiment with floating counters with deep aprons using really beautiful stone. And this was my treatment. They allow you to have double sinks and really make that countertop marble be the focus and the star. Check out the green marble in the Woodland Suite. Here's a funny story. When I was renovating Sarah Off the Grid season two, which was a little Victorian house, I did a dark charcoal gray, almost with a brownie undertone bathroom. Do you remember that? Take a look. When we ordered that marble, they accidentally delivered this marble in green. So for the last five years, I've owned a couple of slabs of this green marble just waiting for it to be used. Every time I've called my fabricator, Tony, he'd say, you know what I have? I have this great green marble. I always knew it was gonna find a home and it found a home here. What I think is fun about this marble is it almost looks like there's pebbles set within the overall slab. It's really dynamic. It's fabulous in terms of natural palette. It ties to the incredible green emerald tile of our shower stall and it's unique. It's a conversation piece. It is not the kind of marble you see anywhere and everywhere. And after so many years, it finally found a place to shine. If you're thinking green's not really your palette, how about gorgeous super white super white is one of my all-time favorite marbles because look at the variation the texture here in this stone so many different colors of gray it ties beautifully to our mosaic floor and when you look at this marble it almost looks like fractured pieces of ice so i like that as a winter reference to where we're located here in the mountains. If storage is on the agenda, there's lots of ways to create a fabulous vanity with extra attention to detail. Here in the Nimbus suite, I took two wall hung vanities. These are in stock available vanities from Ikea, but then I wanted to dress them up a bit. So I installed wall mounted faucets and a nice tall backsplash. And then this countertop is made of leathered Arctic cloud marble. Leathered marble is so interesting. It's as though they've taken it and they've washed it. So it reveals the veins. It has incredible texture to it. It's matte, it's beautiful. And this marble combines grays, blues, whites. This is spectacular. This was actually a remnant piece and we put a thick edge on it, a tall backsplash, installed wall mounted faucets, two sinks, and you've got plenty of storage. Plus, the good thing about using these vanities is they're shallow. So if you're tight on space in your bathroom, they aren't extra deep. They are about 18 and 3 8 deep. So they're about four inches shallower than your standard vanity. Here's another way to use the exact same vanity, except with white drawer fronts. And instead of having it just float on the wall, I decided to treat it to a waterfall edge countertop. So look at this, the waterfall edge creates the legs. And then for an extra little notch of detail, notch, see that? I've notched out the corners on the backsplash. Here's what's interesting. If you're having stone fabricated, it's being custom cut. So if you can imagine a detail, you can do an angle, a little bevel, a countertop profile, an OG, 
There's lots of different treatments. Make sure before you order that you put that little attention to detail process in and create something that is truly unique. Speaking of truly unique, it's always fun to experiment with something new and different that I haven't done before. And when you're thinking about a bathroom that might be used by kids, you want it to be durable. You want it to stand up to the splash zone that might happen at bath time. So that often means installing tiled walls. I was thinking about that here. To install a tile, it's painstaking. Each tile has to be set individually. And so first you have the tile cost, then you have the install cost. So I thought, here's a different way of thinking about it. I'm gonna use intense white Caesar stone honed counters as the waterfall counter. What if I also installed it as though it's wainscoting? I'd never done that before. And so we measured out the lengths of the walls and we ordered panels. Panels came, got set on the wall, and they look fantastic. Speaking of that little extra attention to detail, throughout the house, our trim has a little sort of rift cut in it. It's a little reveal on the outer edge. So I had our fabricator cut that exact same reveal, set in the exact same amount across the top of all of the panels. So it just ties the two materials together. We have the trim that runs around the door and the window, and then our wainscoting panels have that same detail running throughout. It's the little things, but they always make a big difference. The faucets in your bathroom, they really are the jewelry. They're the thing that sparkles. And so when I'm designing bathrooms, if I'm designing multiple bathrooms, you won't find me using the same finish in every bathroom. Why? Because it allows me to harness and embrace different accessories, different accents, have fun and create a unique character. So in the Glacier Suite, I did brush nickel. These fixtures are all from DXV. They're sleek, they're streamlined. They have a lovely cross detail on the handles. They're wall-mounted faucets sitting above floating vessel sinks. This is a combination I really like. In the Woodland Suite, it's all about brush brass because that emerald green accented with the gold tone of brushed brass is just so fabulous. What's interesting about these faucets is they have a textural detail. They're almost cut, they're more industrial looking. It's always these finishing details. It's the faucet, the shower head, all of the robe hooks, the towel bars, tying all these elements together. These are the finishing details that make the difference. In the Nimbus suite, we've got polished nickel because if everything is cool grays and blues, just that little hint of sparkle adds that finishing touch. Polished nickel is so beautiful. What's fun about this faucet is, this is the Hex Faucet Collection from Rubinet. I've been using Rubinet faucets for my whole career. They're locally made in Ontario, and I'm a huge fan of that. And what else am I a huge fan of? They'll work with me and they created this faucet specially for me to combine two of my favorite elements. So this is the hex handle that I love mixed with a different faucet style to create something entirely fresh and new and different. In the Heidi bathroom, it's sleek and streamlined. And what's fun about this faucet collection is it allows you to pick two finishes. So we have polished chrome, Always a good choice for a kid's bathroom because it is the most durable, easy to clean finish, also always the most affordable. And the extra fun attention to detail here is there's a little accent piece so you can order a secondary finish. So I've combined chrome with white. The last things to think about, mirrors and lighting but don't leave them to be the last thing. Always make sure that you are thinking long and hard and early about your lighting and your mirrors because these are the elements that can really help deliver extra punch and personality to your bathroom. What you'll notice when I design bathrooms is I rarely, if ever, use a rectangular mirror. I like something more shapely, more sculptural. So here in the Heidi bathroom, we have a pill-shaped, pine mirror and the Nimbus suite we've got something it almost looks like a hand-formed plaster and it has a softened edge. In the Woodland suite we have an irregular shape gilded form and in the Glacier suite we have an arched top. These make a difference. When you choose a shapely mirror, it just gives you that extra attention to detail. It has more design authenticity and I guarantee it'll help elevate your bathroom. Lighting, 
Lighting is critically important. I always like to combine overhead pot lights and then some specialty lighting. So whether it's sconces or pendant lights, it's fun to have something that adds that character and personality. So here's four different takes on how to achieve that. In the Nimbus suite, we've got three pendants here. Now, these come from Color Cord Company. You're gonna to wanna to check it out. This is an American company, so it's color without the U, C-O-L-O-R, Color Cord Company. They have hundreds of shades of colored cord that you can use. They have dozens of options for canopies, and then they also have lots and lots of shade shapes. So these are smoked gray glass shades with intense blue colored cord, and I hung three of them at different heights in between two sinks just to add some fun to harness that gray and blue palette that I'm using. Also from Color Cord Company, you can get a multi-cord canopy. So here in the Heidi bathroom, I've got a canopy that has two cords going into it. I think you can get ones with up to a dozen cords. So that's fun if you want something that's gonna string everywhere. This is really neat because you can just design your own lighting. I paired existing shades that I had with a two cord canopy and it hangs at different heights as well, just for something that's kind of more playful and whimsical. In the Glacier Suite, I had hand blown globes made specially for this project. I think they look like moon globes or like crystalline balls. Growing up, I loved Finnish ice lanterns, which you make by taking a bucket of water, leaving it outside to freeze. It doesn't freeze right through in the middle. You put a candle in it, it glows. I wanted light fixtures that felt a bit like that and that's what we've achieved here. And these hang perfectly centered above the mirrors and the sinks. If you're thinking about hanging pendant lights in front of a mirror, here's my tip for you. It's really nice if you allow the pendant to come down and cross over in front of the mirror. That way you get a double reflection, double your pleasure, it looks fabulous, and it double reflects the light. How's that for a design statement? Oh, design statement. How about doing something completely unusual? I found these LED puck lights. They're little sconces, wall-mounted sconces, so I decided to install three on one side, two on the other. They're definitely playful, definitely irregular, and it shines the light along the sides of the mirror. Whatever it is, whatever you choose, there's a way to take your bathroom and elevate it. Make it fun, make it filled with personality, and deliver fabulous end results so that you can have a bathroom that is an expression of your personal style.